crouch jumping has always been an important skill in Halo. It allowed players to get to elevated places that normal jumping otherwise would not. This resulted in simple but effective advantages in map movement and positioning, allowing players to reach destinations or tactical spots more efficiently. Now as we all know, the reason why this occurs is because when you crouch jump, your Spartan brings his or her legs up, allowing you to jump onto higher surfaces. For example, we can look at a jump scenario in Halo 3 on the map High Ground. From the top of the bridge, if you try to jump to the Spartan laser, there is a high chance that you will not make it because your legs can get in the way. However, if you crouch jump, you will easily land this jump every time. Now with the introduction of the clamber mechanic in Halo 5, there are those that say crouch jumping has essentially become useless. Since since Clamber allows you to get onto higher surfaces with little to no skill at all. You no longer need to time your jumps and perfect your crouch jumping skills, all you need to do is run up to a higher ledge and press A to Clamber. Many have also said that Clamber itself is a detrimental mechanic compared to crouch jumping because it is monodirectional, whereas crouch jumping is multidirectional. To better explain this, let's look at another jump in Halo 3 on the map Guardian. To get to the overshield from the bottom of the stairs by the sniper rifle, you can't do a simple jump, you need to crouch jump. However, you do not need to face the ledge while you do this. In fact, if you wanted to, you could do this crouch jump sideways or even backwards. Thus, this is multi-directional movement. On the other hand, clamber is monodirectional because you can only clamber ledges while facing forward. Now another way some think clamber is detrimental is due to its animation which locks you out of combat. Unlike crouch jumping which keeps your guns raised and ready, clamber locks you into an animation for a short time and prevents you from firing your weapons until you are done clambering. So after all of this, given how many benefits crouch jumping has over clamber, it would seem foolish for 343 to design their maps to only be clamber specific in Halo 5 right? And it is, and that's why, believe it or not, they designed their maps in a way where clamber and crouch jumping skillfully coexist. And this is what I will demonstrate throughout the rest of this video. But first, let's do a mini analysis. On your screen you see three columns, a red column, a yellow column, and a green column. The red column represents the maximum standard jump height. The yellow column represents the maximum crouch jump jump height. And finally, the green column represents the maximum clambering jump height. So now that we have a visual understanding of the jump height differences in Halo 5, let's look at some time values. As we all know, there is no lock animation associated with crouch jumping, therefore it has a 0 second duration time and keeps your weapons combat ready. On the other hand, Clamber has an animation and its duration is about 0.80 seconds. Thus, you are locked in for 0.80 seconds while clambering and cannot use your weapons, melee or grenades. So now that we have quantified some of the differences between Clamber and Crouch Jump, let's return to our original goal. Let's look at how Clamber and Crouch Jump skillfully coexist in Halo 5's maps. First up, let's look at Colosseum. In particular, let's look at this section right here and how to move from green tower to top mid. And here I'll quickly mention that if I mess up some of the callouts, I truly apologize because I'm mainly a Warzone player. Alright, if you try to jump on these side ledges, you do not get enough height, and sprinting will not help you out either. So it seems like the map is forcing you to clamber the ledge in order to get to top mid. But is it? Did you know you can actually just crouch jump here and get from green tower to top mid without using clamber? Well, you can. You see, even though clamber is present in the sandbox, you are not forced to use it. The end. Okay, I know what some of you are saying, this is just one area of the map and there are many jumps that are clamber specific. True that boys, but I'm not denying Halo 5 has clamber specific jumps. I'm simply demonstrating that clamber and crouch jumping can coexist. Keep that in mind throughout the rest of this video. Now let's look at another jump from top mid to the bridge arcs. You can only make these jumps if you clamber or if you sprint and time your standard jump. But you can also do this by crouch jumping, and in my opinion I think it's better to crouch jump even when sprinting to avoid catching your feet on the bridge arc, and thus maintain top sprint velocity. This allows you to close the gap from top mid to yellow tower much faster. Alright, let's look at one more example on Colosseum. This jump is from blue yard to blue nest, then to blue slide, and then yellow tower. Since the map is symmetrical, it works the same way on red side. Anyway, from blue yard to blue nest, you cannot do a standard jump, so it seems like you are forced to clamber to complete this elevation route. But you actually aren't because like the previous jumps, you can use crouch jump and get the same results. 
in fact you can even do these jumps multi-directionally and not be locked in for the 0.80 second clamber animation but I will admit it is quite difficult backwards. Alright I'm not going to go over all the areas where clamber and crouch jumping coexist but as you can see they are both incorporated into Halo 5's map design. Now let's talk about skill gap. Did you know that in addition to not being locked in a climbing animation for 0.80 seconds like clamber, crouch jumping allows you to move faster on a map. Let's check this out. Here is a jump on the HCS map Echelon. The only way to make this jump is with clamber or crouch jumping since standard jump doesn't get enough height. From the load zone to the courtyard it takes about 2.60 seconds with sprint and clamber. The same route only takes 1.80 seconds with sprint and crouch jumping. And this is no surprise given that your sprint velocity is maintained with crouch jumping unlike for clamber which breaks your sprint velocity for the 0.80 second climbing animation. In other words, this means that every single jump where you can clamber or crouch jump, crouch jumping allows you to do it faster. And boys, that is a skill gap. The ability to move faster on certain areas of the map and stay combat ready. So as you see, even though clamber is present in Halo 5, it does not make crouch jump useless as some say it does. Now let's approach these movement mechanics differently. Let's see how they complement each other. We're looking at that scuba jump on the map Fathom. To do this jump and get to top mid, you need to use this structure. It is a non-clamberable ledge. Thus, for the best results, you need to crouch jump up here and then use clamber to get to top mid. In terms of map design, this is an excellent example of how to use clamber and crouch jump to complement each other skillfully. The first part of the jump is multi-directional, meaning you can do it frontwards, sideways, or backwards. The second part of the jump is a high risk, high reward system. The risk is being locked in for 0.80 seconds while clambering and exposing yourself to possible incoming enemy fire. The reward is getting to top mid for active camo and higher ground. And simultaneously if at any part of this jump route you mess up, you will fall into the ocean and die. Seriously, in my opinion this jump is just amazing in many aspects. Anyway, next let's look at the map Eden. More specifically, let's focus on catwalk and this barrier. Standard jump will not allow you to get on top of the barrier. However, clamber will. But did you know if you look too far left after clambering, you will slide off? Likewise, the same thing happens if you look too far right. In fact, there is a high possibility you will slide off the barrier even looking forward when clambering. The reason this happens is because this catwalk barrier is thin and clamber has a slight launch momentum when you use it. In other words, you are basically launched over the barrier. However, if you use crouch jump, you can make it and not have to worry about sliding off. Now trust me, I could go on all day showing how clamber and crouch jump are both useful on Halo 5's arena maps, but what about Warzone? Let's look at the map Prospect as an example. In particular, I want to draw your attention to the armory. You can get onto these crates, then up here on the armory and launch a sneak attack or ground pound on the enemy team. However, this ledge right here is not clamberable because of its slope. Therefore, the only way to get up there from the crates is by using crouch jump. This jump is unique because it again demonstrates that even though with the presence of clamber, maps can be designed to have non-clamberable ledges as well. In fact, there are many jumps in Prospect and all other Warzone maps that are designed for both movement mechanics. Again, as I have stated before, there are many clamber specific jumps on all Halo 5 maps. But as this video demonstrates, crouch jumping is still key in many areas of Halo 5's map design. Now clamber or crouch jump, what do I prefer should the clamber mechanic be removed for Halo Infinite? As most of you already know, I like Halo's modern movement mechanics. The only abilities I have a slight issue with are Spartan Charge and Thrust. But since I already made an entire video discussing how I would rebalance them, I'm not going to talk about them here. As for Clamber and Crouch Jump, I have no issues at all. And the reason why is because, as we just saw, they can coexist together in Halo's sandbox. A map can be designed to use both Clamber and Crouch Jump effectively and skillfully. Where some people see clamber as keeping players out of gunfights, myself and others see it as getting players into gunfights. A good example of this is the scenario on Mercy.
this was a high risk play. If Clamber was not there, I would not be in the following gunfight because I would have fell to my death. But with Clamber, I was able to stay in combat and later get annihilated by a saw. For many Halo players, including myself, it's not what we can't do with Clamber, it's what we can do with it. We see it as a fun movement mechanic that gets us around maps and keeps us in gunfights. Being locked in a 0.80 second climbing animation doesn't bother us. High risk, high reward, that's how we see it. And as I have demonstrated in this video, the presence of clamber does not exclude crouch jumping from being integrated into map design. There can be clamber specific jumps and specific jumps for crouch jumping. In addition, maps can use clamber and crouch jumping in a complementary way as well. Furthermore, when maps are designed where both movement mechanics coexist, a small time skill gap is created where crouch jumping allows you to move across certain areas faster compared to when using clamber. But even though that skill gap does exist, clamber itself allows players to reach heights that are impossible with crouch jumping which in a way itself helps eliminate limited map design and allows for expanded map design. Both movement mechanics have their benefits and both have their drawbacks. However, that does not mean both clamber and crouch jumping cannot be equally important in Halo's maps, because as we just saw, they can. Every aspect of Halo I look at, I ask myself two questions. One, why is this designed this way? And two, is this fun for players? That's the way I approach weapons and that's the way I approach clamber and crouch jumping too. And this is the reason why I believe they can both have a successful place in Halo's sandbox. Let's look at a final jump on Fathom. To get from Red Yard to Red Sneaky and to Red Bridge, you can only do it by using clamber. Vice versa, to get from Red Bridge to Red Sneaky and down to Red Yard, you can only use crouch jump. Thank you for watching and until next time. So tell me you got it right now